I've had a lot of shops over the years and every time I have a new shop, I put up dust collection. I say, oh, I remember all these things I learned from the last time. And when you take down your dust collection, you learn a lot. And I feel like just taking down from my last one, I feel like I learned a lot. So let me take you through my top five do's and don'ts for good dust collection in any shop and show you the things that I've learned over the years. The first one is you wanna start with as straight a run as possible when you come out of your dust collector. Now, obviously, the smaller your shop, the shorter that run is gonna be, but the straighter you can go straight out of your dust collection, the better. So we have here, obviously it comes right off the dust collector and turns, but that's right at the outlet of the dust collector. But then we have a big straight run here that's, I don't know, 10, 15 feet. It's pretty incredible. Okay, now we got a few do's and don'ts here, but the first one is no hard 90s. You never want a hard 90 turn because it restricts airflow. And that's why you can see we come in gradually here. You can see behind me, there's a 45 degree Y followed by a 45 here. And that's why we didn't come out straight and then drop straight down. And then to go back to the table saw here, we again have a 45 and then a space and another 45. If you need to turn quickly, I would use two 45s instead of a 90. You can buy 90s in PVC, but you don't want to get them. Same thing with the Ys. You can buy a hard 90 PVC piece or a T is what they call it, but you don't want to get those. You want to get the gradual 45 degree Ys and that makes a big difference. Another one is you want to use as big of pipe as you can. This allows the most airflow possible. Now, a lot of smaller dust collectors, you wouldn't run six inch pipe. We have a three horsepower dust collector in here and so we can run giant pipe. In fact, I'll show you in a second, we have a 25 horsepower dust collector that's back here that runs our CNC's. This is our new 25 horsepower dust collector. Look at these things. These are all filters. This is the intake. The return is inside here, but look at this. This is a 25 horsepower blower up here. How crazy is this? You wanna hear how quiet this is? Pretty impressive. So you wanna use as big a pipe as you can. And as you can see here, we don't go down to four inch until we're almost at the tool. And that makes a big difference. In this shop, this is new. In my last shop, we brought the T to the main tool cluster. If you remember that chop and then I did four inch to all the tools my joiner my planer my table saw the router table it all came off that six inch and went four inch I should have got a lot closer to the tools because I noticed a massive difference in this table saw another thing that I learned from the old shop is to tape and caulk all your seams in my last dust collection video I said you could just tape it and it's great here's what I found out when I was taking down the dust collection I noticed I was up there on a ladder looking at the tops of these and what happens is that fine dust starts to get in the cracks of the tape and it starts to fail and then you get little leaks. And I noticed when I was taking these down that we had like little sprays of dust all around this because it was just leaking fine dust all over the place. So this shop, we've taped and caulked everything. Here you can see these, these aren't quite done yet. I still need to caulk and tape that, but this caulking still drying so I didn't want to move it too much. When I first started woodworking, I bought these cheap plastic blast gates. These are the absolute worst and I'll show you why. These cannot clear dust. So you open them, they have a little lip right there which restricts airflow because you don't want things just sticking into your pipe. So there's a little bit sticking out there. And then every time you close it, it pushes dust into the gap around it. And over time that builds up and eventually they won't even close all the way and you gotta take them apart and clean them out and then re-glue everything back together. So these are the worst, the ones that don't go through. These metal ones, a little bit better, still not my favorite. They're expensive, you know, 20 bucks a piece or something. It's been a while since I looked at them. But what happens is one, they leak, they have, you know, they don't seal this gap all the way. But two, they end up getting bent. You can see this is bent. And then when you have them open or closed, it doesn't seal properly. And so you get leaks all around and leaks compound in your dust collection. The more little leaks you have, it really lessens your airflow. It's sort of like a compounding of errors. And over time you get all these little leaks and it gets way, way worse the more you have. That's why we use these blast gates, which are a really cool system that I designed a couple years ago. We just came out with version 2.0 that has these wall mounts and check this out. It's just right on the wall just like this. One of the things I love to do is I put green and red paracord on it. So that way, if I'm at another tool and I'm setting my dust collection and I was over here using the jointer, I can just look from across the shop without having to walk over here and know whether it's open or closed. So that's really great. The other benefit to these is there are no gaps. It seals perfectly. There's some washers in here. You can see a little gap right here. If you didn't have washers, it wouldn't be able to move, but when it's closed and the gap is towards your tool, there's absolutely no loss of airflow. They're really cool. They only takes three tools, a router, a jigsaw, and a drill, and they're easy to do. It takes four bolts, 
eight washers and four nuts and you're done. It's super fun. We have templates available as well as digital plans. You can buy the digital plans and print out the templates and tape them together and make your own. Or you can buy MDF templates from us. We have them in the Cam Tool store. I'll link that down below. Just take them, you trace them, cut them out roughly with a jigsaw. Then I get to use my Tamar router jig for the first time on a project. Super cool. I got to flush trim all these over at my workbench. That was a lot of fun. And then you assemble them and you make sure the washers are towards your tool. Put it all together. I like to glue and caulk the PVC in them and the PVC fits perfectly in the plans. It tells you which type of PVC to buy, but it's the thin wall stuff, the cheapest stuff. And they really save you a lot of money and they work so well. You'll see, I have them all over my shop. We have six inch and four inch. You can buy them instead of plans and the templates, great stuff, highly recommend it. Okay, so it may look like I'm in dust collection chaos here, but this is actually a really elegant solution for a small area. This is a dust collection switcher we made. We also have plans available on my website as well as templates, and it's really cool. We've got this six inch blast gate that can lock off this part of the system, but once you turn it on, we then have five options here, and we've got a spring-loaded pin, which opens up and then locks in at each one and it perfectly lines up each pipe with this dust collection. So it helps incorporate a couple of our dues, which is the biggest pipe possible. Then you go smaller. It also has a couple don'ts though, because flex hosing can really bog down your system. You don't want to have really long runs of flex hose. So what I think I can do with this area, and I may change it if it doesn't work over time, but I'm pretty sure, because we had this in the last shop and it worked really, really well for us. And everything is really close to it, except for the band saws. Band saws are over here. I'm gonna end up adding a router table. So I may add a Y here at some point and run actual hard piping to the band saws. But for now, I think this is gonna work really well. And if I want, I can take this hose off and run it to my drum sander here, which creates a ton of dust. So if I wanna take the switcher out of the equation, it's really easy for me to take this off. That's another tip that's really good. Those squeeze pipe clamps can be really, really helpful. My last tip is to think about the future. First, you don't wanna use that PVC cement. We did that two shops ago and I had to scrap all that dust collection when we left. And that was a bummer because this stuff can get really expensive. I think in the last shop, we spent $1,200 just on the six inch pipe and that didn't include all the connections. I can't imagine what it costs now. So you wanna think about the future when you're building out your system. Caulking and tape is your friend because you can always pull it apart later, but it's gonna give you an airtight seal. Also, you wanna think about the future. You wanna add, if you have an area of your shop that doesn't have a tool that you really want, when you're running your dust collection, run an extra run and just cap it off with something and tape it off and let it sit until you get your new tool. Because you don't wanna to have to then pull apart all your dust collection down the road and have to add a Y and all those things. So if you add a run now as you're setting it up, I think it'll be really, really helpful for you. Guys, head over to our website, check out those plans and templates for the blast gates and the switcher. They're both really, really good. My favorite things in here, I've used them since I've made them and just really, really great stuff. If you wanna support the channel, head over to that store, picks up some one of our great tools. We have a wonderful charity you can support that helps disabled woodworkers. And as always guys, stay safe in the shop. Thanks for watching.